Greetings, cyberdogs and citizens of the internet. This is Rendog coming at you from the Griswold family apartments in this Let's Play Minecraft survival series. In the previous episode, we were working on the apartment blocks that you see behind me. And in this episode, my friends, we are going to be finishing these bad boys off, as well as working on the Cyberdog Monument a little bit and doing some terraforming around some of the giant pillars of the Cyberdog Monument. So we've got a lot of crafting to do in today's episode, guys, and we're going to be talking a little bit more about shaders, which is the topic of the day in Rentopia at the moment. So guys, sit back and relax, and let's play some Minecraft survival. Now guys, the more astute of you guys would have noticed that uh, we are basically back to where we were before episode 69. There are no shader mods going on right now. However, some of you may have noticed that things are looking a little bit smoother, a little bit cleaner. Uh, the frame rate is running much higher than it used to run and in general, things are looking a little bit better around Rentopia. And that is because for this episode, I'm going to be testing out a mod called Optifine. And this is a mod that has been recommended to me by a lot of you cyberdogs out there uh, as a replacement for the shader mods. And I'm gonna talk a little bit about the shader mods in this episode, guys, and uh, about the decision that we're gonna make, whether or not to keep shader mods or not. But um, welcome back to the original looking Rentopia. Let's uh, let's spend an, an episode in this mode right now, and that'll give us a good perspective on whether or not we want to keep shader mods in the end but guys I have just got back from the strip mine outpost after about two hours of stripping managed to pick up almost a stack of lapis lazuli almost a stack of diamonds which is awesome and I actually burrowed into an emerald chunk at one point to manage to pick up six emeralds, which is sweet. And uh, <laughs> I was using the, this uh, Efficiency 3 Diamond Pickaxe, which I repaired before I headed to the Strip Mine Outpost. Used a little bit of Terra, but not too much. Claw is almost broken, though. Uh, and I used a little bit of Paw. Bark is almost damaged. And I just cannot wait for Minecraft 1.8 so that I can repair all of this jazz, man. Things are, uh, things are looking precarious in my inventory right now. <laughs> uh, but I've also spent... I don't know, the last half an hour or so, just working on uh, this apart this particular apartment block over here. Uh, I've almost got it finished off now. All we got to do is add the roof um, and then this apartment block will be ready to be decorated. And this apartment block is also basically now ready for, for decoration. Uh, we need to add, you know, furnaces and a kitchen and some beds and all of that sort of jazz. Um, but guys, I want to take you into the Cyberdog Monument right now because uh, I just want to show you a little bit of work that I been doing in this monument too. Uh, I, I did this work before I headed off to the strip mine outpost. Actually, I've done quite a lot of stuff off camera, guys, so apologies for that. Um, but I just got in the zone, you know. I got into the Minecraft zone and I just got busy getting busy. And uh, as you can see, things are looking pretty awesome around the monument right now. I finished off all of the balconies, including all of the diagonal balconies, this one and this one. I've raised all of the walls, which I showed you guys in the previous episode. So all of the walls now um, are the same height. And as you can see, we now have like a, a genuine feeling of a room inside of the Cyberdog Monument. And uh, with Optifine installed, you guys can see that the that the glass is now transparent again, looking really awesome. Everything is looking really, really smooth. Uh, the water is back to normal. The Cyberdog Monument uh, centerpiece is back to normal. And you know what, man? This just feels just this just feels better to me. You know, like. I feel most comfortable in this, maybe it's because we've been playing so many like episodes in this sort of, uh, <laughs> without any shader mods installed, but Optifine has increased my average frame rate from about 20 to about um, 70 when I'm recording. I'm just looking at the Bandicam um, FPS overlay right now. So the game for me anyway is much smoother. It pl it's playing much smoother. It's much more a much more pleasant experience to be honest. Um, so I, yeah, I don't know man, shaders are just... Ah, man, I don't know. Shaders and I are just, I don't know, we're not really getting on at the moment. As much as I love them and as much as um, they are so freaking awesome, just don't think uh, it's something we can hold on to, guys. However, <laughs> I just want to show you a little something something that Optifine does to our world. It actually changes the skin of Diablo over here. Uh, he's he, he's kind of looking more pimped out. He's like a more pimped out chicken. Uh, still as evil, though, but uh, he definitely looks more pimped out than just that plain old white chicken uh, that we had before. So, um, yeah, Diablo's looking pretty sweet. 
Uh, but guys, before I get going on today's episode, uh, what I really want to do is organize the chaos of my inventory right now. Uh, between going to the strip mine, working on the Cyberdog Monument, working on the Griswold family apartments, I have just got so much freaking jazz in my inventory right now. It's driving me cray cray. And uh, I just want to, I want to come up to my bedroom. I've got my armor here already. I want to sort of organize my life over here, man. I want to drop off some of the stuff that we don't need. Bark, I'm going to leave you here until Minecraft 1.8. Paul, I'm going to leave you here also. Rambo, um, yeah, you're basically almost broken. We're going to leave you and your arrows in here. We'll keep Fang with us. We'll keep this diamond shovel. We don't need claw at the moment. Uh, Terra can stay with us. This diamond pickaxe is basically broken. Um, and this golden sword that this with, with uh, looting one can stay here too. Um, let's have a look. The very damaged anvil can stay. We don't need that jazz. Uh, all of this other stuff. Yeah, we can keep all of this stuff because we're using it for crafting. Um, that's fine. Um, actually, you know what? This iron pickaxe can get out of my inventory. This freaking slightly damaged anvil can get out of my inventory also. These diamonds, these diamonds can stay. We'll go stick them in the in the storage house, the storage rooms actually. And uh, we'll keep these emeralds. No, we can drop off the emeralds also. All right, that's feeling much better, man. Inventory is slowly emptying out. Um... Like, whenever my inventory gets to this point, my brain, like, starts to get super chaotic and I start stressing out. <laughs> I'm sure that happens to you guys also. Uh, let's just drop all these freaking diamonds off. Just arrange this inventory a bit. There we go. That's looking sweet. We'll take this lapis with us just in case. Let's drop off this redstone also. I don't want this freaking redstone in my life. Um, there we go. We probably need a bit more food, though. I've only got four bread left. Have we got any fruits in here? No. Uh, are we back to eating carrots again? No bread, no fruit, no food, no nothing. Man, the coffers are <laughs> are running dry up in Rentopia right now, man. Jeez. Um, I really, I need to hit those farmlands with a vengeance. But anyway, guys, let's get busy with today's episode. I think I'm going to start uh, in the Cyberdog Monument. I want to lay down another canal. I'm not sure if we have enough lapis to do it, but I'm, gonna, I'm certainly going to try. I think we could probably finish off one more horizontal canal. But uh, all, all of the NPCs are scurrying to get home. Let's, uh, let's have a nap. There we go. Oh, also, as you guys can see, uh, when we use Optifine, it eliminates that unable to locate sign issue that we have. Um, okay, look, sounds like we've got a bit of a zombification around here. Um, you can see that we've lost both of our iron golems again. One of the iron golems has wandered off behind the buildings there. And I think another one of the golems has wandered uh, underneath uh, Mole City over here. We have like a, a huge cavity down here. You guys can hear zombies uh, moaning right now and that's because they spawn underneath Mole City over here. And I think one of our, yeah, there's one of our golems. You freaking butthole, how did you, how did this golem even get here? I don't even know how we're going to get him out of here, man. That's the question. Freaking take the zombie out. There we go. Put a torch down. I think the zombie's probably spawning over here somewhere. Golem, how did you get here, bro? Oh, you, man, you drive me crazy. Speaking about uh, craziness, in the previous episode I mentioned that I thought that we had lost our horse. And uh, <laughs> like a ton of you guys actually pointed out, Rendog, you freaking bottle, you have not lost your horse. You left your horse in Amazonia, inside of a room in Amazonia. And I don't even want to think about what that room must smell like right now. But uh, that horse has definitely been doing its business up in that room and... Damn, it must be stanking like nobody's business right now. All right, guys, welcome back. I have just finished this canal over here with Lapis. My brain is not really functioning that well today. It's about 7 o'clock in the morning. My, uh, my synapses are still waking up, I think. Um, <laughs> so I'm failing pretty hard, uh, and I just derped pretty hard. So I've decided to not include the derp in the recording because it's bad for my ego. Uh, but I have just finished this canal over here, guys. Looking pretty sweet. We've got the water flowing in from the centerpiece, and all I need to do now is add, a, a, add all the water and add some glass over here. So uh, I'm going to get busy doing that. And while I'm doing that, guys, I want to talk about the feedback from the Cyberdog Nation about the shaders that we've been looking at over the last couple of episodes. And uh, a lot of you guys will know that we have been trying to decide whether or not to keep shaders in this Minecraft survival series. Uh, if this is news to you, it's because you have not watched the freaking previous episode. And uh, as per usual, I'm angry with the ass. But uh, I'll let you off this time because it's early in the morning and I don't feel like doing anything to your butthole right now. Um, but, but we've been trying to decide whether or not to keep shaders. And in the previous episode, I had installed basically a light version of a, a shader mod that looked pretty awesome and that uh, actually looked way better than the shader mod that I used for episode 69. 
but there were still some issues with that shader mod. And, you know, I've had a long, hard think about this, um, about whether to use the shader mod or not, and how to use the shader mod uh, or not in this series. And I think based on the feedback that I've got from you guys, I think we're probably going to refrain from using the shader mod. Like, whenever something like this um, splits a community, I think that the, the, the best option is to, like, opt out of it, right? If you get, like, an overwhelming majority uh, to do something, or, like, like a lot of people really, really want you to do something, then, yeah, go ahead and do it. But I think when the overwhelming uh, majority of people don't want something to happen, then you don't do it. Or, if there is a split between the majority and the minority, like a 50-50 split, for example, then I think the, the, best way to, like the best way forward is just to not do it. Um, and I think that's probably the stance we're going to take on shaders, because while a lot of you guys really, really loved the shaders that I had in the previous episode, like, basically, the, the same amount of you guys hated them. And uh, th there are some of you guys who really hate them. Uh, some, of the, some of you guys hate them so much that... Uh, you, you, you ba have basically said, I'm not, like, not going to watch the series anymore. And some of you guys have been getting headaches from, this, from the uh, shaders. And obviously, we don't want to have any medical side effects from, from using shaders either. That's, that's, that, that would not be ideal. Um, so I think what we're going to do is, is, is come to like, some sort of a compromise. Because personally, I really love the shaders. However, I've got to say that the shaders actually make it kind of difficult to play Minecraft. Um, it, for me, personally, it lowers the frame rate of my game, so, and maybe that's because I don't have a good enough computer, but uh, it's actually like a little bit harder to pl actually play Minecraft, right? So it's, it's more taxing on my brain to play Minecraft with shaders on. And obviously, like, you know, like, I, I, don't, I don't ever want this game to become taxing or to become something that I don't want to do or so, like a game that I don't want to play. Because I love this game, man. Like, this game is such a huge part of my life and I don't want anything to, to stop myself playing it. And I think that if we would carried on, like, using shaders, especially with adventures where things get really, really dark or going into the nether, I think I would probably find myself like hating them and and not being happy with the shaders uh, being installed. So I think like for my own sanity and for the sake of this series, I think it's probably a good idea to to refrain from using the shaders. Uh, and I think like I think what we're going to do though, because I really love them and because I really love what they do to to our builds and the way that they make our builds look like. Uh, you know, it, the shaders make Mole City look really amazing. They make the houses look really amazing. The apartment blocks look really amazing. Um, you know, the, like, mo uh, like the mole hole looks awesome. Uh, the, the giant lava ball looks amazing. I think what we'll probably do is kind of kind of do like a, like a shader episode every now and then. Maybe what we should do, right, is every 10 episodes or, sh or, so, or, or so, we have like a like a, a shader episode or a, or a reveal episode where we explore our Minecraft world with the shader mod installed and have a look at all of the new builds that we've made. So, for example, if it takes us three or four episodes to finish uh, the Griswold family apartments, then after three or four episodes, we stick the shaders on and have a look at what they look like. Um, and I think, I think that will work quite nicely. It'll kind of make like the shaders, the shader episode like a treat for all of us, you know. We get to see like our, our Rentopia world uh, from a different perspective with the shaders installed and we can all ooh and ah at the awesome shadows and the awesome lighting effects. But then after that we get back to normal. And I think that's probably, uh, I think that's probably the wisest choice, guys. And if we do it that way, then, like, we won't become desensitized to the shaders either, right? And I'm going to talk about that in a moment. I just want to tell you guys what I'm doing now. Uh, what I want to do is just terraform this area or this side of the Cyberdog Monument so that this pillar over here is standing on, like, a solid ground. And also, this balcony is also on, like, a solid bit of land. So, we're basically going to be, like, extending the hill over here so that we can support this balcony and support uh, this giant pillar over here. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna get cracking with doing that guys, but um, What I was also thinking about uh, with the shaders last night while I was uh, trying to fall asleep was if we use the shaders in every single episode Eventually what happens is like you get desensitized to them, right? And the awesomeness that you once saw is no longer that awesome because you see it all the time You see the shadows all the time and and you get really really used to those graphics You get really really used to like being spoilt, I guess with these like awesome visual effects 
that there's nothing you can ever really do in your Minecraft world to like top those graphics or to top the way that it looks. And maybe what we should do is make like shader episodes like a special episode, right? We, we all get to like see uh, Rentopia in a different light. We all get to see Rentopia with awesome graphics installed. And I think that like that'll be like a much better experience for all of us. Uh, and it'll definitely be a better experience for me. I don't ever, like I said earlier, want to get frustrated by anything in my Minecraft world. And um, there were some things in, the, in my Minecraft world that, with the shaders on that were frustrating me. And when I play Minecraft like this with Optifine installed or just with like default Minecraft, I never get frustrated. Well, the only thing that fr frustrates me is creepers, but it's a different kind of frustration. It's not like a, a game frustration, you know? And uh, like, I want to make sure, yeah, that, like, that I never get frustrated with this game because I love this game, man. And uh, <laughs> I don't ever want to stop playing Minecraft. So that's kind of my verdict on the whole shader deal, guys. I think what we'll do is when we do like nice big reveals, uh, we'll, we'll turn the shader on and we'll spend like an episode in the shed with the shader mod installed. Uh, when we find really epic things out there, uh, when we build really epic stuff, that's when we'll, we will make most use of the shaders. And um, before then, I think we'll just stick to Optifine because uh, the frame rates are so much better. Like, this is, I don't know, the, like, I, I'm, I'm enjoying this Optifine experience more than, like, the default Minecraft experience. So, um, I think, yeah, I think, I think that's, that, that's what I'm going to stick with for now, guys. And uh, let me know what you think in the comment section below regarding the, 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 the whole question of shaders. And, um, and like, I, like, I think I'm happy with this decision, right? I think I'm happy to stick with Optifine. I think most of you guys will be happy with that also. Um, but anyway, let's carry on talking about it, man. You know, let me know what you think in the comment section below. Uh, like, you know, if you want to chat about it on, in, in Dogcraft, want to go make a thread on the forum, do it, man. Go sign up, make a thread. Let's chat about this. Uh, but guys, I'm going to carry on terraforming this land over here. And once I've done, there's still quite a lot of work to do over here. Once I've done that, I'll kaplam, well, I'll bring you back from this kaplam and uh, we'll head over to the Griswold family apartments to finish off the roof of that third apartment block. Uh, so I'll see you in a second, guys. Kaplam! All right, Cyberdogs, welcome back. And I have just finished terraforming the land underneath that balcony of the Cyberdog Monument. And as you can see, it is looking pretty sweet. It looks much more like a mountain now than it did before. It looks like it's actually a part of this mountainside next to the lake side villa over here and I think once all of that dirt gets covered by grass it'll look much better and what we can try and do is make it into like a like a flower feature or something like that like these banks that that line the cyber dog monument I think we probably need to turn them into something sweet like a fountain feature or a I don't know like a flower feature a garden bed something like that but um, I'm pretty happy with this this balcony now has support and isn't just hanging off the edge uh, so that's a nice physics fail that dealt with over there and uh, that's looking pretty sweet guys and uh, I think I'm gonna leave that for now and head over to the Griswold family apartments. Uh, I, I've been munching on carrots also guys. I'm, I'm, I'm back to those uh, crunchy ass orange tubes of deliciousness. Um, I, I actually hate carrots. <laughs> uh, but we are freaking out of food uh, in Rentopia at the moment man. I need to go breed some more cows and, and, uh, and pigs and get slaughtering. But for now we're gonna munch on these freaking carrots. And for the last part of today's episode, guys, I want to finish off this roof of the third apartment block here in the Mole District. And I'm pretty much almost finished off this apartment block off camera. As you can see, it's looking pretty awesome. This particular apartment has pretty good views, although it's looking straight over the railway line. And uh, this is looking straight into the Viking District over there. Um, so that's not a great view for that apartment. But this apartment over here, guys, this is the prime apartment of the Griswold family apartment block. Check it out, man. We've got a fan freaking tastic view of the Great Bridge over there. An excellent view of the farmlands from this balcony. A really great view of, uh, of well, of Big Mac's pen, basically. And the Cyberdog Monument from this balcony. So uh, this apartment is definitely the most expensive apartment of, the, of these apartment blocks. And I would suspect that Griswold himself will take this one. Um, I certainly would take this one. <laughs> uh, but guys, what I'm going to do now is just finish off the roof of this apartment block so we can have one final look at the completed Griswold family apartment area of the Mole District. And it's going to be freaking sweet, man. I'm going to take a nap and uh, then I'm going to get that done. I'll bring you guys back on the other side of this Kaplooey. Kaplam!
Alright guys, welcome back. I have just finished taking down all of the scaffolding and finishing off the roof of the final apartment block in the Mole District. And as you can see guys, the Griswold family can be very, very pleased with their apartment block. I think it is looking absolutely awesome. And uh, the thing that I'm most happy about is that we managed to um, attain the goal of making these buildings have a gradient uh, going downwards, following the contours of the road of Mole City. And uh, I'm really really proud of that actually I, like I didn't think it was going to turn out uh, really well I didn't think I'd be able to make it work but I think we have managed to crack it guys let's head up to the top of uh, Granny Dog's uh, monument over here to have a look and we can see guys there's a really really awesome gradient over here and it, it just makes the skyline of Mole City look so freaking sweet uh, maybe we can get a view from a little bit further back over here see what it looks like from a distance uh, but I'm so happy with those apartment blocks guys all we have to do now is decorate them accessorize them add all of the, uh, the all of the things that we need into the kitchen some beds some doors etc but check it that guys you can very clearly see the gradient of the top of the roofs there uh, very very sweet I'm so happy with that man what an awesome build and uh, I'm, I'm really proud of this man looks awesome check it out from here that is looking amazing. And it kind of gives you an idea of what Mole City is going to look like when it's finished once and for all. It is just going to be so awesome. We're going to have different apartment blocks in different parts of the city uh, following different styles. This is the style of the Mole District, obviously. And uh, I think it's pretty freaking sweet, man. It looks awesome. I think what we probably need to do is link those two up over there somehow. Um, that's probably the last, the, the last aesthetic thing that we need to do to the front over here. Of course, we have to add like flower pots and all of that jazz. But um, right now, I've just like built the buildings themselves. Like the buildings aren't ready to be lived in, if you know what I mean. Um, but all of their foundations have been built now, which is sweet. So let's do it like that. I think that should probably do the trick. Let's get down and have a look. This has definitely tested my like uh, my my building of houses skills. That's for shizzle, man. Yeah, check it out. That works nicely. Now they both look uh, they look basically the same. Okay, awesome, man. That is a whole bunch of symmetry achieved, a whole bunch of sym symmetry failures avoided, and I am super super stoked with these apartment blocks. It's only one more thing to do in this episode, guys, and uh, it's something that some of you guys have been mentioning in the last couple of videos. It's been quite a long time since we've taken our buttholes up to this um, to the dogolith. So I've already got eight of you guys onto the dogolith right now. Four of you from YouTube, four of you from uh, Dogcraft.net. So why don't we head up to the dogolith, guys, and see who has been added to the monolith of all awesomeness um and uh man what a sweet episode like <laughs> we achieved so much in this episode i managed to terraform the land underneath the balcony finish off one of the canals in the cyber dog monument and finish off the third freaking apartment block uh, of of mall district in mall city so that is uh, i'm pretty happy with that man looking at my stopwatch we are now approaching 70 minutes of play so uh a nice a nice episode of actually doing stuff <laughs> and not just like running around doing nothing which I occasionally do in this series uh, but anyway guys let's get up to the season three level of the dogolith to see who has been added uh today and in this episode guys we are adding the following cyber diggity dogs to the dogolith to be immortalized in the interbubs forever from youtube subscribers we have got rosa felt host greg feldman uh, Feldman High, I think, oh no, Feldman Hill, sorry sir, I couldn't get your entire name in there, uh, Troy Trustrop, and Matt Mon too, so welcome to the Dogolith, my cyber dog friends, you have been immortalized in the interbubs forever, and from dogcraft.net, we have got Diggity Dog, Awesome Ra, Delden, and Hebrew Hammer 587, so welcome to the Dogolith, all of you guys, and remember guys, if you want to stand a chance of being added to the Dogolith, you need to be a subscriber of the Ren Dog channel, you need to leave a constructive comment here and there in my videos, I choose you guys randomly from the comments on my YouTube videos, you can also join dogcraft.net, the official cyber dog fan community, there is a thread in the forums there where you can leave your YouTube username to stand a chance of being added to the Dogolith. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching this episode of Minecraft Survival with me, Ren Diggity Dog, as we look across Mole City and towards the Cyber Dog Monument. Things are looking sweet, and I am super stoked with this Minecraft series, where we are now in our Minecraft world. I'm having so much fun. Hope you guys are awesome, man. Hope you enjoyed it. If you did, hit the like button. We will see you in the next video. And remember, guys, if you haven't subscribed yet, hit that subscribe button. It's easy or your butthole shall be in jeopardy.
This has been Red Dog playing Minecraft Survival. See you in the next episode, my friends. Goodbye.